Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Zoda F Increase. My name is Nathan East. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today is October 30th, and that means just only one more day in the month. So I figured I would come on now and do my November reads and studies as well as my October wrap up. Um, I think starting in January, I'll do a separate wrap up video and then um, the things that I'll be like studying and reading for the month. But up until the end of the year, I'm just going to put them in one video. Um, but yeah, we're just going to run through the things that I read and studied in October, see if I accomplished that, and then get into the things that I'll be doing for November. So October, um, Bible study, I think I had maybe four things, which was BSF, as we're studying Acts and BSF, um, my church Bible study, SIPS chronological um, Bible study, and then the unexplainable Jesus Bible study that I'm doing online in the Facebook group by Erica Wiggenhorn. Every one last, every last one of them, I completely like just haven't, yeah, no, no bueno. Um, so let's talk about the unexplainable Jesus. I have the workbook over there on my shelf. I got, I think, into week three, and then I just stopped. Um, yeah, I just stopped. Don't remember why. I will say that it's really, really good. It goes through the book of Luke, and it's so, so good. I really was enjoying it. I just, I don't know. I stopped doing it. Um, as far as BSF, I had to stop for two Tuesdays because my son wasn't feeling good and then I just haven't gone back on and I don't know if I'm going to continue with BSF this year just because of the timing and a lot of other things that I have going on right now. So I'm not sure if I'm going to continue on. I'm going to try to join my class next week and if I can't, I'm just going to let the, um, the kind of instructor of my class know that I won't be able to join We'll see. Um, my church's Bible study. I don't go to my actual church for Bible study since they have it on Tuesdays and I live in Jersey. Yeah. But um, I do do the assignments. I have three assignments. I need, well, four if you include the Tuesday before. Got four assignments I need to do. So, yeah. And SIPs, oh my God, you guys don't understand. <laughs> I so badly enjoy the chronological Bible study when we first started it. Um, when Angela first started it up and it was so good that I got hooked on like Genesis 1 1 like I got hooked on that verse but I just haven't had the time to actually sit and get into it yet and it kind of sucks because I really want to dive in but there's just so much calendar wise like there's so much calendar wise going on um, my church we're getting ready to prepare for a two-day revival my bishop's service is coming up um, I'm also going away twice this month so it's just like there's a lot going on um and then I have to also prepare myself mentally for the service that I have to speak at um which I need to even figure out if I'm still doing that or not because yeah I have to figure that out but um if I am gonna still be doing it I need to prepare my mind for that and work on my sermon it's just a lot I haven't been able to do anything I have not grabbed my bible until yesterday if you guys saw on my instagram I posted up um an ig story as well as a instagram post of me studying the um, gospel according to john i am going to be doing that and i'll get into that once i get to november but my bible studies i started and then just completely failed at finishing which you know it happens to the best of us it happens to everyone um where you're like excited to do a study and you don't and i'm gonna make a whole separate video um just talking about how things have been going for me because you guys know i haven't really been able to fully study for months um and it's yeah we're gonna make a video so moving on to the book. So let me sip on my ginger ale and put my cup down. So I just have my journal, which I write all like my notes and stuff down in. So um, nonfiction. I said that I wanted to read two nonfictions in the month of October, and I did. So the first one is Unbraided by Carla Monterosa. It's Transform Your Pain to Power and Purpose. It's basically her experience with um, sexual abuse and talking about how she got over it and through it with the help of God, of course. I gave this a four-star rating. I know some people don't like to rate nonfiction because they feel bad rating a nonfiction book because it's something personal to the author. However, if I pick up a nonfiction, it's for a specific purpose for me to sort of relate to that author so if i don't feel like i'm getting much out of it i am gonna rate it period even if i like it i'm gonna rate it um i gave this four stars only because it wasn't super super heavy on the scripture for me you know i need scripture um 
And a lot of people have asked me, like, why I need a lot of scripture. Previously, before, it's been, what, two two years now? Two, three years? So, about 2015 and after that, I tried so hard to um, get over the depression and things by reading these kind of self-help books. But none of them were, like, spiritual-based, and the ones that I did end up reading didn't have a lot of scripture. And I need scripture to know that you're coming biblically, biblically from the Bible and to know that you're correlating truth to what you're telling me and not just giving me your thoughts and opinions and what worked for you. That's why I prefer a lot of scripture. Um, and I don't mean it gotta be, like, 30 scriptures on a page, but at least every two or three pages, I need to see a scripture coming from somewhere. Like, I need to know that you're getting your thoughts and your um your help like god is the source of your help and if i don't get that i don't know i'm not saying that this didn't have scripture because it definitely had scriptures like there were scriptures but i just i don't know i wanted more however i did enjoy the little journaling prompts i didn't write in this book um as i had to like quickly read it for review but i did like the journaling prompts and stuff in the back so um this was really really good to me i'm definitely going to reread it i think it's very useful if you've ever had any experience with sexual abuse um really really great and i'm all about god taking your mess for a message your pain for purpose your um trauma for triumph and all that so this was really enjoyable and i'm definitely going to reread this for myself the next book was the evangelist and minister's handbook oh my baby um this is so good my mom finally got herself a copy i made it all the way to page 112 so i'm currently at part three which is called the minister's work which starts at chapter eight and i am so loving this i'm taking my time definitely can sit and read through this in a day um like just fly through it but i'm taking my time i'm marking i'm highlighting i'm writing my thoughts in my notes um, again, for me, this is kind of like a review because this is stuff that my leaders at my current church have been teaching me for years, but, um, it's still useful for anybody looking to get into evangelism or just becoming a minister in general. This is definitely a good book to start off with because it tells you everything you know, need to know before you get ordained, before you, um, begin your ministry and things like that. So it's really good. I'm enjoying this. I'm halfway through, well, almost halfway through, um, great book okay so moving on to my fictional novel so the first one i have is light on a hill by connie lynn cassette this is book one in the cities of refuge series oh i love this series i'm so sad that it ends next year with the fourth and final book i just i feel gutted but i am reading this with the biblical fiction buffs book club that jenna van mauer here on youtube started through goodreads and um yeah it's really good i just it's fun to reread this because i'm finding new quotes i'm finding different meanings and things i'm re-annotating in this and it's so freaking fun so i'm enjoying this all the way through like all the way through november will be the last month so i'll definitely be finishing this up in november i am listening to the audiobook as well as i reread so we have this which i did do the next one is redeeming love by francine rivers and this is the daughter of increase book club for the month um it's actually the book club for the rest of the year it goes from october november and december but uh, i love angel as much as I be wanting to punch on her face because she just does she she does and says the dumbest things sometimes and it irritates me, but I also understand because of how she grew up. Um, I just love Michael Hosea. He is such a man. Ooh, he is a man of God, y'all. He's a man of God, and um, I love it. If you have not read this book, I highly recommend it. If you still want to join in on the book club, you definitely can. I know that I'm supposed to be doing like live sessions on the book club on this book for book club but it's just been hard because my saturdays have been busy with doing ministry work um outside of daughter of increase and it's just hopefully not this week because i won't be home this week i'll be down south um i'm going down south on saturday just for the day but driving there and driving back gonna be crazy um so won't be able to do that so hopefully next week if i'm not doing anything fingers crossed we can have our live discussion in the facebook group but um this this, this is life this is everything and more it is so good and yeah moving on next is a royal family by linda ferguson this is book two in the lion and the butterfly series i'm trying not to look at the title but um ugh, five star all the way i read this with my sis steph you can check out her channel by clicking the eye on the screen um oh my god five stars just Jerusha is amazing. She dealt with a lot. Um, this book more so was about you letting go and giving God your life and letting him have total control and being able to totally surrender no matter how hard it gets. 
this this got emotional because that end stuff knows that that end with Simone just it gutted me now see the, the problem for me was I already knew what this book was going to include because I had read the synopsis when I first got all of these books in the mail from the publishing company but I just I still wasn't ready for how it happened and like baby girl Sarah it's if you guys have not seen my reading blog, um, check it out. Click the on the screen because I talk about this book a lot in that video and just I gush and I cry and I gush some more and I recommend, I I highly recommend. If you are not good with death, if you're not good with, um, if you're not good with infertility, if you're not good with miscarriages, if you're not, like, those are like trigger warnings for you guys. So this talks about miscarriage, it talks about infertility, it talks about death both adult and children's dying um it, it's a it's a hard hard read but it's emotional and you guys saw when i read this i was an emotional wreck already so this just added to me being more of an emotional wreck five stars freaking loved it oh, so sad it's coming to an end but yeah five stars all the way the next book i read was a christian fantasy and that's going to be sojourner by donna lynn boygett now you guys know i got mixed feelings about this book so i gave this book five stars right i mean not the book i I have mixed feelings about the series, but I did give this five-star rating. So, I don't know to this day. Mind you, this is book three. Book four, which is the final book, comes out next year. I don't know if this is about humans or fairies. I could not tell you for the life of me, okay? The series is called The Tales of Fae Raven, which is why I think it's about fays. But I'm not sure <laughs> if it's fairies or not. But I know it's christian based it is really good i enjoyed it however the only problem i have is that this does a major time skip from the second book to the third book which kind of blew my mind because i was so confused about what was going on but then as the story progressed things made sense so that's my only gripe about this book was that i was totally like just where did that time skip go what happened in between but I still enjoyed it. So this was a great read. And I definitely do recommend The Tales of Fae Raven if you're looking for a Christian fantasy that's not super, super heavy, but like cute and fun. This is great. The next book I read was The Last Man at the End by R. William Bennett. This is biblical fiction about the guy named Simon who is from, I can't remember the book. I think it's Matthew 27, 30 something. Don't quote me. I'll put the scripture on the screen. But it's basically the Simon that helped Jesus carry the cross during um, the time of him walking to get crucified. That guy. This was so good. So beautiful. I gave it five stars. Yeah, if you haven't seen my reading vlog, just click the on the screen for that. Um, this book is definitely a lot more gripping than what I thought it would be. Um, definitely emotional. Definitely some sad points. Um, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. You can see my experience of reading this by watching the reading vlog above. So... There we have that. The next book I read in October was The Heart Changer by Yarm Del Bocchio, and it's Only He Could Set a Captive Free. Now, this is middle grade biblical fiction, and I gave this four stars. Um, it follows a young girl named Miriam, and Miriam is actually based off of the young girl that was captured in 2 Kings chapter 5 um, that was brought to Naaman's kind of home to be his wife's kind of servant assistant. This was interesting um especially it especially because it was like middle grade based um if i'm not mistaken the young girl is 12 at the time she's 12 yeah so the young girl is 12 at the time that this happens and she gets kidnapped from shunem taken back to naman's house to be the sort of um assistant to his wife and it's her coming to her own faith and not relying on her parents faith because she is by herself in a different land and um if you don't know, Naaman is, he was the sort of commander over the entire Syrian army. You can just read about it in 2 Kings 5. I enjoyed it. It was good. But because it is middle grade, uh, of course, it wasn't as, like, impactful as most books. But I did enjoy the parts that I thought were impactful enough. So that's why I gave it four stars. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll just leave a link to my review down below and you can read the review. You guys know I am terrible at these like talking kind of videos, trying to explain books because I try not to give too much away. But um, I truly, truly enjoyed this book. The last book that I read for the month of October was Just One Touch by Cynthia Connor Goyang. And this was a book that a lot of people recommended to me. Um, and I had it in my Amazon cart for a lot, long time, took it out, put it back in, took it out. Put it, there was a whole back and forth with this book. Um, and then I found that the publishing company... Who published this book so I contacted the publishing company and they actually sent me about four or five books um, that I requested which was the heart changer was actually one of the books that I requested 
plus this one and then the other two books you guys will see in my november tbr but um this i gave four stars this is a retelling a biblical fiction retelling of the woman with the issue of blood and this book the young girl's name is sapira i believe she's also 12 years old and it's just her journey up into the issue of blood and then 12 years after that and it's heart gripping don't get me wrong it definitely deals with infertility it deals with miscarriage it deals with um abusive marriages it deals with a lot and i was like wow now this is not like um land of silence by tessa afshar by no means but i definitely think this is a runner-up if you really did enjoy land of silence by tessa afshar i think you would definitely enjoy this book by cynthia it's definitely a well-written book um i gave it four stars just because i had already read tessa afshar's book so i feel like if you have not read land of silence read this one first and then read land of silence if you read land of silence you can definitely still read this but you won't have that kind of same impact that land of silence gave so don't go into this thinking you're gonna get land of silence fails because you're not even though it's about the same kind of story um but it's just as good and i enjoyed it nonetheless so there we have that one okay so those were all the books i had a really really fun reading month so let's talk about november so let me flip the page to november so for november the only things i'm going to be studying and i'm going to be as honest and blunt as possible because you guys know i have been sucking and failing at studying personal like my personal study time um i'm diving back into the book of john i said i was going to do it for the longest and i just didn't do it and i actually finally started um doing that but this time around, I'm doing it very different than how I previously did my studies. I normally just directly study in my journaling Bible, but this time I'm going to take anywhere from two to four days on one chapter. And those first two days, I'm going to be in a notebook writing my thoughts, my notes, my questions and things like that. And then on the, either that third or that fourth day, I'm going to then go into my journaling Bible and journal the key points from everything that I study. And I'm also going to get back into studying Psalms. Um, right now I'm stuck at Psalm 69. I need to, like, I should have been done with the Psalms, like, months ago. Um, so yeah. So John and Psalms are the two things I'm going to be studying outside of Acts because I'm doing Acts for BSF as well as church. Um, prayerfully, 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 I can get into this SIPS chronological Bible study. I really want to do it. Like, I just, I want to do it. Simple. Sim simple as it. I want to do it. We're going to leave it at that. Okay, so moving on to nonfiction. I have three nonfiction books. Obviously, The Evangelist and Ministers Handbook by Deborah C. Hooper. I mean, this is good. I'm loving it. I need to finish it. It's a good book. Hopefully, I can finish it in November and be done. The next one is a book that I got sent for review, and I actually started reading the introduction and stuff already, and it is a 31-day journey to confident conversations with god it's called she prays by debbie lindell and um it's basically just a 31 day prayer challenge pretty much um and yeah it seems like it's gonna be really really good um there are like prompts for you guys like prompts and questions and stuff to like answer so i'm gonna be doing that i did read day one already yesterday but i never got a chance to like journal so i'm gonna reread day one so <laughs> we're diving headfirst into this the last book i have um that's non-fiction is gonna be from liz curtis higgs it's 31 verses to write on your heart i was sent this oh my god back in 2016 guys this is an arc mind you it's an art copy and it says 10 18 16 so i was sent this book two years ago i have yet to sit down and fully read it i think i had this in one of my videos maybe two years ago and you guys know when it comes to review books i will read them through quickly so that i can get the review done for the companies but i don't always get a chance to go back and fully read and get the experience so i'm gonna be doing this one day at a time just because this is 31 verses 31 days of prayer it works one day out of here one day out of here and call it a day i wanted to start in november but we're gonna start now okay so on to my fictional books now i have most of my books here except for two so i'm going to talk about those two first the first one is called deadly deceit i cannot remember who it is by because i don't have the book in front of me um but what i do know is that this is christian suspense thriller mystery kind of book this is a sequel to another book 
but they're sending me the book to read for review. Um, Rebel is, so I need to do that <laughs> ASAP. Okay, so the next book that I don't have physical copy of as of yet is going to be The Piper's Pursuit by Melanie Dickerson. This is a part of a Hagenheim series, which is a YA Christian fantasy series in which she does retellings of those classic fairy tales and um, novels that we all enjoy. She has one on Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, um, The Princess and the Frog, and things like that. I have read uh, The Warrior Maiden, which is her retelling of Mulan. I I love that book. Like, that book was amazing. So moving on to the ones I have copies of. So Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers is obviously the book club pick for Daughter of Increase. We are diving into this deal. Um, so pretty much, yeah, I'm going to be, you know, reading more of this beauty. And I'm so happy to have a physical copy. It's like, I read this in ebook form, so it's kind of interesting to, like, read this and then go back to my ebook and look at the notes that I wrote then and write them in here or see if I feel the same way or think the same way so um I this is historical this is historical fiction biblical retelling of the prophet Hosea and Gomer and it is so good and we love us some Michael Hosea I love Angel but again like I said earlier sometimes I'll be wanting to duck on her face because she just does dumb things but it's understandable why she does the things that she does so we have this okay so i did bring my little ponytail down because that little puff was getting on my nerve you know i went to the hair salon but it don't look like i did but i did i got a washing set did the rollers but the rollers ended up puffing out because it's kind of rainy outside so yeah um but the next book i have is light on the hill by connie lynn cassette i'll be finishing this up with the biblical big biblical fiction buffs book club that Genevieve and Maurick here on youtube created through goodreads i'll leave a link to the goodreads down below you can click the honest screen to go to her channel but we are into this book and i believe december will be starting a new book so hopefully that poll will be going up this month so we can kind of pick a book but um i'm excited for this we started this in september so it definitely ends in november and i'm stoked to finish this up i'm listening to the audiobook with this and it's just such a whirlwind just to revisit this world and um relive my favorite moments with mariah and derek i'm just i'm loving it and etienne oh loving it we can't stand rabib i think that's how you say his name we don't like him i didn't like him up until book three and then i felt bad for him but we still don't like him so we're gonna leave it at that Okay, so the next book, I'm also getting a second copy of in the mail. So this will be included in my biblical fiction giveaway when I do that. But it is going to be The End of Magi by Patrick W. Carr. This book, oh god, I think it comes out November? It comes out November, if I'm not mistaken. It'll be on the screen exactly when. Um, but this just sounds really interesting. I'm actually going to read the back of this book for you guys because I really can't explain it myself. So... It says, centuries before the Magi arrives in Bethlehem, a prophecy sets a young Magus on his path. Following his vision of the coming Messiah, the prophet Daniel calls forth a select group of men who will count down the calendar until the arrival of Israel's promised king. Centuries later, as the day draws near, Myrad, a young Magi acolyte, pleads for his life when his adoptive father and others are slain by a ruthless, ruthless Parthian queen. Parthian queen. I think that's how you say that. Parthian queen um equipped with very little in haste my red escapes the city and searching for a way to hide from the soldiers scouring the trade routes tries to join the caravan of the merchant Wal wallagash yep that's what it says wallagash <laughs> um the merchant senses the my red is keep that my red is keeping secrets but when the young man proves himself a valuable asset an epic journey filled with peril near captures and dangerous battles begin with every day that passes the calendar creeps closer to the coming messiah and over everything shines the dream of a star that my red can't forget the promise that the world will never be the same it sounds intriguing um, I don't know much about the Magi from, like, back in that time, so there's always been something I was interested in, so to actually have a biblical fiction-based novel about that now is pretty cool, so I'm excited to dive into this, and again, this is actually for a blog tour that I have to read this book, and I'm getting two copies. I got this copy from the actual publishing company, Bethany, from Baker's Publishing Group, but I'm actually getting another copy from the tour company that I'm blogging for. So I'm going to have a copy to give away to one of you guys. See how that works? God is good. Amen. But um, yes, this just really sounds interesting. I'm super stoked. And I find that a lot of Bethany's sort of biblical fiction books are freaking awesome. So yeah, we have this. The next book is one that I'm so excited yet so sad that it's like coming to an end. And I'll be buddy reading this again with my sister Steph. Um, and that's going to be A Royal Father. It is the third and final book in the Lion and the Butterfly series. And uh, 
I'm not ready for this book. One, because I read the back of the book. So I know that it's going to include a character that I could not stand from the first book named Effa. Who I said you can just throw inside of a pit with his father. Yeah. Um, that means if he's involved, his father might be involved. I don't like Caiaphas. I hate Caiaphas. Like, <laughs> the hate that I have... Granted, I know that hate is a strong word, okay? I know this. But as a character, I don't like him. Okay? I don't don't like him I, I could cry tears about how much i don't like him um and then i know that timon is not going to be here because of what happened in book two and jacob is back but i just i don't know i'm not ready oh and then then there's another guy that i like that i'm super like i'm super excited about and i almost forgot his name um what is his name antonius oh he's like timon too if you steph knows what i mean when i say timon too antius or Antonius, however you say his name, he's like Timon too for me. So like, I'm excited for this, but I'm not excited for this. But um, if you guys don't know about this, I have done reading vlogs for both book one and two. Um, I'm not going to spoil it, but it is a continuation of me reading those books because, yes, um, this book deals with lots of romance and lots of hard topics that we don't like to discuss. Um, hopefully there's no more death. No, no, we don't need people dying again. Can we just not die? Linda? Linda, um, can we just have no more deaths, please? Thank you. Okay, moving on. Next, we have the other two books that I actually got from the company that I just mentioned to you guys not too long ago that sent me these two books. Um, they sent me The Heart Changer and Just One Touch. The company is Ambassador International. Upon requesting those two books, I requested two other books that I thought were interesting. So the first one is by D Debbie Gilliland, um, and it's called To Comfort a King. And this is basically a biblical retelling of Abishag. Um, and if you guys don't know who Abishag is, she is the sort of last wife of King David who ended up marrying King Solomon down the line to protect her from King Solomon's brother. Um, yeah. This was a wife that was supposed to be... Uh, keeping David's bed warm during his last moments and if you guys don't know what I mean by that basically she was basically made queen to have sex with him but David never did that because David loved Bathsheba so yeah it's her story and I read about this from another book I'm trying to see the book um The Heart of a King duh by Jill Eileen Smith that book is where I found out about Abishag and it just sounded really interesting so I requested this book because it sounded about the same but a lot more in depth so we have this beauty. The next book is going to be a sort of futuristic suspense novel. It has some historical fiction aspects to it because some some part of this is set back in the time of 19... What is it? I'm trying to figure out the date. It switches back and forth between... Oh, excuse me. 1492 and present time and then Israel and all this other stuff. Yeah, it's like a lot. It takes place in 1492, 1948, just all over the world. It's one of those kind of books. But um, it is Christian fantasy is what I'm going to classify it as, Christian fantasy. It talks. It's, it's basically called The Blood Moon Redemption by Judy du du Ducharme. Ducharme. I cannot pronounce her name. Um, it sounds interesting. I'm going to read the back of this because it's kind of complex for me to explain to you guys. As I said, this takes place over the span of multiple years in different locations so um it says an ancient relic a puzzling prophecy and a young woman tied together through the ages throughout history blood moons have always been surrounded by persecution and provision great trials and triumphs the blood moons of 1493 through 1494 provided a new world for the jewish people in 1949 and 1950 the blood moons gave them israel and the following eclipse presented jewish people jerusalem in 1967 and 1968 now a new set of blood moons is on the horizon and tassi's family is certain they will bring about a great change Tassi, named for a lost religious relic, has her sights set on her career and love. She doesn't has to have time for silly children's stories. Dismissing the blood moons as circumstance, her unbelief threatens to keep her from her destiny. When Tassi finds herself in the center of worldwide turmoil in a terrorist plot, can she accept her family history and fulfill her place in the future of Israel? Or will the country of her heritage finally fall to its many enemies? Blood, Room, Blood Moon Redemption is an end time thriller that will keep you riveted until the very last moonrise. It sounds really interesting. I'm excited to figure out what it's about. Um, I don't do many thrillers, but this one sounds like one that I'll definitely enjoy since it's talking about Blood Moons. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this book. <laughs> 
Okay, so the last book I have is called The Shaft. This is by Scott V. Delaney, excuse me, and this is an adult Christian thriller novel. And I was actually contacted by the publicist to read and review this book, and I definitely told her I would because it sounded like something I wanted to get into. You guys know I'm not really big on thrillers. I don't really care for thrillers. In my mind, I correlate thriller to horror. I don't do horror, but I figured I could try stepping out into thriller by starting out in the Christian genre first. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and there will be a reading block for this book. But this is an adult Christian thriller, and it deals with a secret society that is trying to change the minds of of people because they're okay let me just read the back because it's, it, it's kind of confusing for me to explain so i'm going to read the back of the book so it says it is december 2017 and a sweeping religious movement is attaining traction in the united states as spiritual leaders diligently work to spread the word of god to people liberal factions in the world of pharmaceutical and scientific development create a secret society with a dark mission to thwart the group's conservative impact on what society considers to be morally acceptable as a string of church-related murders plague the nation the fbi and local authorities race to locate the assassin responsible when the members of the secret society realize that the murders are not stopping or slowing the threat they resort to kidnapping one of their abductees is Andrew Morrison, a key leader of the Call Ministry. After he manages to escape from his captors in Texas, he must identify and locate his family as well as the killer of many of his friends that were fellow leaders in his ministry. But as angelic hosts enter the scene to protect and intervene, now only time will tell who will win this compelling battle of good versus evil. In this riveting supernatural thriller, a chilling murder spree places a church leader in the crosshairs of a killer determined to stop a religious movement. This definitely sounds like something that can be like extremely real in like today's society because a lot of people do go to like extreme kind of you know they some people go to the extreme we're gonna leave it at that but um it sounds really good i will be doing a reading blog as i read this book because this is new for me to be reading reading thrillers i'm not huge on thrillers you guys know but um i'm excited to read this and give my opinion of it it sounds like it's gonna be one heck of a ride um it's about 308 pages long excuse me now 304 pages long there are 79 chapters wow um sometimes when i see like books that like be having 80 chapters i'd be like why but then you got to think about it a lot of the times the chapters are like three or four pages long sometimes one page so yeah um but i'm excited it's definitely going to be one of those reads that might take me on a whirlwind and be emotional so i'm excited to dive into this into a reading blog so hopefully this video was not too long for you guys i am so sorry about all these books um i do have to record my october book haul i got a lot of books but again like i said i'm still waiting on a few books to come in the mail so my october book haul probably won't come up until maybe the second week of november unfortunately but um, these are all of the books I'm super, super excited to be reading in the month of November. We're going to fingers crossed that I can get them done. Fingers crossed. Um, I also will be recording me studying the book of John, doing some clips here and there. Because I know a lot of people ask me different ways to study the word. And I don't always do Bible journaling. I do sometimes go back to my old school way when I feel like I'm out of alignment. And um, that's how I've been feeling. So I'm definitely going to realign myself back with God. Um, so yeah, but other than that, I think that is it for this video. So comment down below any books that you're going to be reading for November, any books that you read in October. If you have any book recommendations, let me know. I definitely have a few recommendation videos coming soon for you guys. Cause I know a lot of you guys are interested in like book recommendations outside of biblical fiction. I've been asked about the thriller kind of genre and that's why I'm trying to get more into thriller because I know I, I have a substantial amount of thriller books. I just haven't read them yet because i'm not you know keen on that yeah if i have a book that you guys might also own and you want a buddy read let me know i love doing buddy reads um it just makes the experience of reading even more fun i'm always open to doing buddy reads so yeah i may add another book on to my dbr but I'm not sure because I think I want to buddy read that book with my sis, Steph. And it's called The Spice King. Um, I think I definitely want to buddy read that with my sis, Steph. It is historical fiction and it just sounded really, really good. So we'll see um, if I can add that in or just buddy read that with her in December. Um, we'll see. But yeah, that is it for this video. I don't need this video to be super long. I'm pretty sure it's long because I talk too much. Um... But yeah, and for those who have watched, excuse me, this is the last thing I have to say. For those who watch my evangelist, um, my final evangelist ordination video, 
um, and left your, your like questions in the comment section. I'm definitely going to do a video. I was recently asked um, how I go about writing sermons. And I definitely do want to do a video, like a specific video on how I formulate my sermons. Because for me, it is not an easy task. Like, I can definitely pick a scripture. But when it comes to doing my outline and my manuscript, I get so flustered and stressed out. So I'm definitely going to show you guys how I go about it. Um, I will be working on my sermon for November 24th. Um, I still have to check if I'm going to be doing that service or not. Um, but if I'm not, I'm still going to have that sermon written anyway. So yeah, but other than that, again, now this is the end. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for liking this video. Comment below if you have any questions. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And if you are subscribed, click the bell to stay notified. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.